You know how every season, it feels like we're drowning in isekai? I mean, we've seen it all. From dudes getting reincarnated as slimes, vending machines, and heck, I'm just waiting for the day someone turns into a bar of soap. But what if I told you that there's one isekai out there that doesn't just break the mold? It shatters it completely. I'm talking about an anime that takes everything we know about the genre and flips it on its head. Say hello to No Longer Allowed in Another World, the most unique isekai you'll ever come across. So, the story kicks off in 1948 Japan, where we meet our hero, if you can call him that, Osamu Daze. And no, he's not some sword-wielding, armor-clad savior. He's a melancholic author who's literally preparing to end it all with his lover, Sachan. It's dark, it's moody, it's black and white, like we've stepped into an old film. But just as they're about to embrace the sweet release of death, a truck comes out of nowhere and runs them over. Yeah, talk about an unexpected twist on the whole dying in peace plan. Next thing you know, Desai wakes up in a colorful fantasy world, all confused and frankly quite annoyed. He's greeted by an elf named Annette, who's all bubbly and ready to introduce him to his new life as the chosen hero of Zorberberg. But our guy Desai, he's having none of it. He just wants to die and be done with it. She's trying to give him the usual heroic pep talk, but he's too busy trying to off himself. The whole scene is like watching someone trying to put out fire with gasoline. It's dark, but you can't help but laugh. Basically, Desai's got the personality of a wet blanket, but in the funniest way possible. He's not here to slay dragons or rescue princesses. He's here to figure out how he can get the hell out of Dodge. Now, in classic Isekai fashion, Desai eventually stumbles into some action, or at least what should be action. He finds a cat girl trapped by a monstrous death tree. Normally, this would be where the hero jumps in to save the day, right? Not Desai. He's more in interested in the fact that she's about to die, because apparently that's his weird kink. But things go south fast, and they both end up getting captured by the tree. Here's the kicker, Desai's poison from all those sleeping pills spreads to the tree, and it dies instead. So technically, he saves the cat girl, but more by accident than heroism. So now, Desai and his two female companions, the cat girl named Tama and Annette arrive at this beautiful town called Roth, where Desai and the gang meet King Thomas and his daughter, Princess Charlotte. Now, you'd expect some epic quest or monster to slaying mission, but nope. The king's biggest issue? Finding a suitable husband for his daughter. He even gives Desai a video game style choice between suitors. Gomez, a warrior who's all armor and no face, and Otto, a sleazy minstrel who looks like Armin from Attack on Titan cosplaying as Robin Hood. Desai, being the unmotivated mess that he is, decides he can't pick between them and leaves the decision to Charlotte. And here's where things take a turn. That night, Charlotte confines in Desai about her troubles. In true Desai fashion, he suggests that she should just do whatever she wants. Not exactly the heroic vice she was expecting, but it clicks for her. The next day, she shocks everyone by announcing that instead of marrying either of the suitors, she's going to commit double suicide with Desai. Yep, this princess is not your typical damsel in distress. She's ready to follow Desai into the great beyond. Except, of course, they don't actually die. This is still a comedy after all. But wait, there's more. Turns out Gomez the warrior isn't even human. The guy's a literal monster, bursting out of his armor in a twist that's both ridiculous ridiculous and honestly kind of expected. And to top it all off, Charlotte doesn't marry anyone and instead becomes the queen in her own right. While the trio is debating their next decision, Annette introduces us to her adorable familiar. But wait, things take a sharp turn when a mysterious woman shows up and casually tames a raging dragon like it's a misbehaving puppy. Impressive, but also kind of terrifying. She turns her gaze to our trio and, upon learning that Desai is an otherworlder, declares, I kill all otherworlders. Before you know it, Annette and Tama are down for the count, and Desai's got a fist hole sized punch through his chest by this lady who we learn might be the infamous wrathful Dark Lord, Waldalia. But does Desai panic? Nope. He cups her face tenderly and compliments her sadness. Only Desai could turn a mortal wound into a poetic moment. After that near-death experience, or just another Tuesday for Desai, Annette's familiar whisks them away on a magic carpet to Zvaiten Temple, where they meet Yusha, a cleric who looks like Annette's twin sister separated at birth. Meanwhile, Desai and Tama are out shopping for, you guessed it, more poison. Because why recover from the poisoning incident when you can double down, right? Concerned for Desai's safety, and probably tired of patching him up, Annette and Tama decide to buy him some armor. And it's not just any armor. This thing is massive. Think about Elden Ring meets fashion disaster. Desai looks like he's ready to take on a fortress or maybe just collapse under the weight. But the day wouldn't be complete without meeting Kotaro, another otherworlder who embodies every annoying sidekick trope imaginable. Decked out in a gold chain and a dollar sign bling, he tries to insert himself into every conversation until Annette and Yisha have enough and knock him out cold. Honestly, satisfying doesn't even begin to describe it. Just when things could 
couldn't get weirder. Kotaro introduces us to Lord Suzuki, an otherworlder who arrives on a giant blue and white wolf, looking like a discount Power Ranger. He declares himself the new ruler of Zorberberg, oozing arrogance from every pore. Suzuki's first order of business? Turning Annette and Tama into his unconditional slaves, using some creepy mind control powers. Yeah, this guy's charm levels is in the negatives. Our boy Desai, never one to back down from a bad situation he could make worse, decides this is the perfect time to get inspired for his next literary masterpiece. Armed with nothing but his pen and a dangerously low will to live, he confronts Suzuki in the cathedral. Desai walks in and starts interviewing Suzuki like he's writing a tabloid expose, poking holes in Suzuki's delusions of grandeur. This, of course, ticks off Suzuki, who sends his beastly pets after Desai. But here's the whole plot twist. When one of the beast bites Desai, it dies instantly from his ever-present poison status. Who knew self-destructive tendencies could be weaponized? Defeated and deflated, Suzuki tries to end his own life, but Desai stops him. Him. Not out of compassion, but because he hasn't finished writing his story yet. Priorities, remember? We dive into Suzuki's backstory. A timid guy bullied all of his life, seeking power and recognition in his new world but failing spectacularly. Desai pens his tale titled, No Longer Allowed in Another World, which somehow creates a magic portal that sends Suzuki back to his own world. Turns out Desai's true gift is writing people out of existence. Talk about a plot device. After the dust settles, our trio hits the road again in carriage and all. Along the way, they pick up a new companion, Nia, a cheeky little kid running a warrior matching service scam. Annette, ever the trusting soul, falls for it hook, line, and sinker. But karma catches up when Nia gets jumped by three lowlife otherworlders. Desai steps in to save the day, scaring them off with nothing but his deadpan stare and a dangerously low HP that somehow spikes when threatened. It's official. Desai's apathy is his superpower, with Nia now tagging along, probably because he sees an easy mark in our gullible group. They arrive at Grun Castle, only to find themselves embroiled in yet another mess involving power struggles, mysterious bishops, and whispers of even more dangerous otherworlders plotting to reshape Zorberberg to their liking. Can't a guy just nap in his coffin in peace? Meanwhile, in the background, there's some serious plotting going on. Bishops are having conferences about rogue otherworlders. The Pope is shocked at his children's betrayal. And oh, did I mention that Desai's long-lost lover, Sachan, is possibly hanging out with the daughter of the Wrathlord? Yeah, things are getting more more complicated, faster than a Game of Thrones family tree. The things I do for love. <laughs> Back at Grun Castle, our motley crew realizes that their journey is far from over. With powerful enemies lurking in every corner and Desai's mysterious ability to yeet otherworlders back to their own world, it's clear that their adventures are just beginning. And honestly, with all the chaos, humor, and unexpected heartfelt moments, we're all here for the ride. No longer allowed in another world is the isekai that keeps on giving, giving us laughs, giving us unexpected plot twists, and giving us a protagonist who's as relatable as he is ridiculously out of place. If you're tired of the cookie-cutter heroes and predictable storylines, this anime serves up a refreshing cocktail of dark humor, satire, and surprisingly deep moments that will leave you craving more. So grab your popcorn, settle into your own metaphorical coffins, and join Desai and his eccentric squad as they stumble, quite literally, through adventures unlike any other. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell to be notified of any latest updates. That said, see you in the next one.